This is the video for Mod 8, Lesson 5, Classifying Triangles on the Coordinate Plane. In this video, our goals are going to be um, using um, what we learned about distance, Pythagorean theorem, or and we're going to talk a little bit about the distance formula uh, to classify triangles on the coordinate plane. Um, and so um, the big focus is we're going to look at classifying triangles by side as well as classifying triangles by their angles. Um, so the first three classifications we're going to look at are classifying by side. Um, and within sides, we can classify a triangle as scalene, isosceles, and equilateral. Um, so these are terms that we saw on the, um, in, in the past couple sections. Um, and the big thing we're going to end up using is our Pythagorean theorem or distance formula to find the lengths of the, of the sides, right? So if we have uh, a triangle with three different side lengths, we say that's a scalene triangle. If we find a triangle with two congruent sides or two equal side lengths, uh, that's going to be isosceles. And if we have a triangle with three congruent sides or three equal side lengths, uh, that's going to be um, equilateral. We could also classify triangles by their angles. Um, so um, to classify by angles, uh, one thing we can do is once we have all three side lengths, we can use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, which we've used a little bit in um, section 8.2. And so if I um, substitute the side lengths into Pythagorean theorem and I get um, two, side, two values that are equal, that's going to be a right triangle. If I substitute the values in and get um, a C squared that's larger, that's going to be an obtuse triangle. And an obtuse triangle is where we have one angle that's larger than um, 90 degrees. So a right triangle has one angle that's 90, an obtuse has one angle that's larger than 90. And then um, an acute triangle is where um, all three angles are uh, less than uh, 90 degrees. So all three angles are acute. And that would be when C squared is less than A squared plus B squared. Uh, we also have an equiangular triangle. Um, we actually don't have to use um, the Pythagorean theorem to figure that out. If all three side lengths are the same, then um, it's, if it's equilateral, it also will be equiangular. So all the angles will be the same measurement, which will be 60 degrees. So that one you don't have to use the Pythagorean theorem. Once you find all three side lengths, if they're the same, we know that it's equiangular. All right, for this problem, it says plot each triangle and find the length of each side and then classify by side and angle. So the first thing we're going to do is plot the triangle just so we can kind of see how the sides laid out. So if I look, I have a 0, 5. That's my point A. I have 4, negative 1. That's point B. And then um, negative 3, 3 will be point C. Okay, so this is our problem here. And so uh, the first thing we're going to do is find the length of each side. Um, so we saw in the other video that we can do Pythagorean theorem if we want to. We might find that it gets a little tricky when we have lots of sides and it can be a, you know, a little overwhelming sometimes. So uh, another option is you can do something called the distance formula, which is essentially is just Pythagorean theorem, right? So what that formula says is if I um, subtract my x's, And then subtract the y's, square them, add them, and take the square root. Um, that's going to be the same as just doing Pythagorean theorem. So those will be the, the same thing. It's really just identifying what point you want to find the distance between, which is which is really the length. So we're first going to identify um, a segment we want to use. So maybe I want to find AB. And then um, I'm going to um, label these out. So I have that um, A is 0, 5, uh, B is uh, 4, negative 1, 
And then um, just like I would with slope, I'm going to do my x1, y1, x2, y2. And then um, just simply take the length. Again, this is just a version of Pythagorean theorem. Um, one way to think of it, too, is, you know, you have the squares, we have the subtraction, and then we're just placing those values in there, kind of like we would do with slope. So remember, subtraction is part of the formula. So my x's can go first. So I can do 4 minus 0 squared. Um, and then I can do a negative 1 minus 5 squared. Uh, when we go ahead and put that, um, we can actually put that entire piece in our calculator. And so um, we actually get that length uh, to be um, 52. So this length is root 52. I'm going to do the same thing again now for the um, other segment. So let me draw a little line here. Um, so now I'm going to do the same thing for um, maybe segment uh, BC. So I could see B is 4, negative 1. Uh, C is negative 3, 3. I'm going to call this now x1, y1, x2, y2, and just put it into that formula. All right, and now when we um, place it in, um, so I have negative 3 and 4. Um, I have 3 and negative 1. Uh, if you see two subtraction signs, you might help to make it a positive. Um, so then when you put it in, it makes it a little easier. And so then we would get um, our um, length. I could put all of that um, under, in my calculator. I'm going to leave it in radical form just because it's going to make it a little easier for us later. And then when we go ahead and put all of that into our calculator, we should get that to be root 65. Okay, and then finally the last one, we're going to do the same thing for our last side. So our last side, I'll do this one in orange, uh, we're going to do AC, so I have A, Uh, a is 0, 5. That's my x1, y1. C is negative uh, 3, 3. And then we're just going to put it into um, our distance formula. All right, so we'll get here negative um, 3 minus 0, uh, 3 minus 5. And then um, we'll get the square root of 13. Okay, so we found all of these different lengths. Um, and then now we're going to think about, okay, well, what, um, what do we actually do with that? So now we're going to take these lengths and we're going to classify um, with Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so when I go ahead and now um, take all this, I'm actually going to erase to make some space here, but, you c but I'm going to keep all the links. You can feel free to pause the video if you need to copy this down before I erase it. And now um, we're going to go ahead, after we find all those links, we're going to go ahead now and um, classify by side, and then now classify by angle. Okay, so if I look at by side, you can see I have uh, three different side lengths. I have root 65, root 52, and root 13. So right away, I know this is a scalene triangle because um, all the side lengths are different. We then know that the... Um, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem now to test what this is. So root 65 I know is the largest because it's bigger than 52 and 13. So now I'm going to um, substitute those side lengths into Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to test, well, are they equal? And when 
my square square root, they undo each other. I get 65 is equal 65, which is a true statement. So that means it is a right triangle. So we would say that this is a right scalene triangle. And then that would be the end of our problem. For this next problem, it's the same thing. So I'm going to show the setup for it and then um, show the worked out answer. Then you'll see it. Um, so this one might take it be a little shorter um, just because it does get a, a little tedious. So we have that um, R is going to be uh, 2, 2. I have S is going to be 1, negative 3. And T is negative 1, 0. Okay, again, for this one, you could use Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to use the distance formula um, just because it might be a little bit faster, so I'm not having to draw so many triangles um, within that one triangle. But again, if you want to do Pythagorean theorem, go right ahead. And so this would be our distance formula. And so we have three different sides that we're um, going to find. So my first one maybe I find is like RS. Right, and so RS, um, I have that point R is 2, 2, that'll be X1, Y1, um, S is going to be 1, negative 3, and then I'm going to go ahead and substitute into the distance formula. All right, um, and then I'll, I'll show that work down just a moment. Um, same thing with the, um, and this would be, uh, x2, y2. Um, same thing with the next one. So I have here uh, this next side, maybe I'll call, I'll use ts next. Um, so point t is negative 1, 0. Um, point s is 1, negative 3. I can have x1, y1, x2, y2. And then I'm going to substitute that in. And then uh, the last one I have a TR um, so we're going to see T is negative 1 0 um, R is 2 2 I have x1 y1 x2 y2 and then um, I'm going to substitute that into the distance formula. So if you um, completed the distance formula with those points, um, these are the different lengths you would get. So root 26, root 13, and root 13. If we classify by side, you can see two sides are the same. So this would be isosceles. And then um, if I do Pythagorean theorem uh, with this problem, um, and um, you can see that the, um, the largest side um, would actually be root 26. So if I did Pythagorean theorem with this, um, root 13 squared plus root 13 squared, um, does that equal uh, root 26 squared? And it actually does. So it's a true statement, and so this would actually be a right isosceles triangle. And, and, and that would be our final answer. If you have questions, make sure you are trying the you try problems um, and then asking um, for help during class, signing up for T-Bolt time, or getting help in the center.